Jonah Hill and Miles Teller look like they're having a tremendous amount of fun in Todd Phillips' new movie. It's called War Dogs, and this is uh, the tale of a couple of high school chums who go on to become arms dealers. Uh, the deal first uh, with kind of small-time contracts, but eventually work their way up the ladder to do a huge $300 million deal with the U.S. government, uh, selling uh, a massive amount of ammunition and arms uh, to the military. And it's actually kind of a cool story. Some of it is based on uh, what actually happened with a company called AEY. This was a, uh, a Rolling Stone uh, story that eventually evolved into uh, the beginnings of this uh, movie and it also became a book. But a lot of stuff has been embellished and fictionalized and sort of crafted for the big screen. And you can kind of tell that this is a movie being stretched apart in a lot of different ways. It's really working hard to entertain in the same way that a Scorsese picture like uh, The Wolf of Wall Street might. And interestingly, Jonah Hill was uh, a very prominent player in The Wolf of Wall Street. And it's almost like he's, uh, you know, taking on some of uh, the uh, the characteristics, the charm, the ballsiness, the, the brass uh, kind of tax of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character in The Wolf of Wall Street. He plays a guy named Ephraim de Veroli, and he will stop at nothing to make a buck. And uh, he's kind of a scumbag, uh, but he is uh, a charming one. And Miles Teller, uh, playing David Packhaus, he gets kind of embroiled in the, uh, in the charm of Ephraim and wants to kind of start making the bucks that Ephraim is boasting about uh, by selling arms and getting involved in these sort of small time deals. He calls himself a rat at some point, uh, chewing on the crumbs of the bigger deals that are out there. And uh, you know, at first I thought that the movie just wasn't really connecting emotionally. Like I just didn't really give a crap about these two characters. I could tell that they were having some fun. There's some stylish uh, camera work in here. There's cer certainly some moments that look good on screen and would look fantastic in the trailer, which is you know some of the footage that we're showing you here. Uh, stuff like uh, Jonah Hill firing a machine gun with a big smile on his face. He's got it. They, he's kind of got this affected laugh that he pulls out every once in a while, which is kind of charming. Um, you know, and I was really not digging the movie. I was feeling like, man, this is just not connecting with me. It's trying too hard. Um, you know, Todd Phillips also brought us The Hangover, and I feel like this is a, uh, uh, or at least one or two of The Hangover. I'm not sure exactly how many Hangover movies he was involved with, but that was a movie series that uh, definitely had its highs and lows, and I feel like this is almost uh, the formation of a new wolf pack with an almost equally audacious story, uh, although, you know, less drunkenness a titch less drunkenness and debauchery. Um, and it just it feels a little artificial. It feels like it's kind of out of time, even though they're placing it in the 90s. There's a lot of stuff that looks like, uh, you know, it was kind of lifted off of the cocaine-fueled movies that we've seen in the past from the 80s, um, which is fine. You know, obviously everybody's in the movie is also trying to portray something larger than what they are. They're all sort of portraying characters within the story of this thing, trying to be big shots. Uh, and so I think some of those embellishments and some of those scenes actually make sense. They just weren't connecting. And I think part of it has to do with, uh, uh, you know, the, the talent, the maturity of, of Todd Phillips. He is no Martin Scorsese, you know. And, uh, and this movie looks like it's trying to have that same kind of Scorsese-like impact. But a curious thing starts to happen because, and I, you know, I, I certainly equate this all to the charm and charisma of both Teller and uh, Jonah Hill, uh, you know, it's hard not to kind of fall in love with these dudes, you know, and as the movie progresses, almost Stockholm Syndrome, like you do start to care about these characters because we're with them for so much of the movie and they keep doing stupid things and they keep making deals that are going to go bad and pissing off people that love them. By the end of it, I feel like I got a pretty good story. It was, uh, you know, crafted with, I think, a real sense of fun. Um, and I think that everybody wanted to build something that was going to be enjoyable and maybe a little bit of a commentary on uh, the corrupted uh, sort of quality of the U.S. military and how easy it is to, you know, overcharge and, and uh, you know, get a ton of money out of this uh, this never-ending bank, this sort of war industry that's out there. But as a completed film, I just think we've seen a lot better stories, lots of gangster movies, lots of tales about uh, bad boys making big money and then their falls from grace. We've seen that many times at the cinema before and it's been done better. This is okay, you know, and it's crazy because there are a lot of really good movies to go out and see uh, this weekend and from last weekend. So I wouldn't put this high on the pecking order unless you're a huge Jonah Hill or Miles Teller fan. And uh, a little spoiler alert, Bradley Cooper's got a pretty interesting 
role in this thing as well. He's also a producer and I think a buddy of Todd Phillips because of course they worked on The Hangover. Anyway, I'm going to give War Dogs a 7 out of 10. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.